Good morning and welcome to the Sheep and Cheerful podcast, a podcast about crafting and creating as much as I possibly can in as cheerful a way as possible. My name is Nikki, I am the host and the CEO of All Things Sheep and Cheerful and today is, drumroll please, the 12th of November 2021. And I know that's right because I had a conversation last night about the day and I checked it this morning. And do you know what is special about today? Obviously, it's the day after Remembrance Day or Veterans Day abroad. But today, it's a palindrome. And all you clever people are bound to know that. But for those of you who are saying, yeah, I know that, I know that. What's a palindrome? It basically means that it reads the same from right to left and from left to right. So 12, 11, 21 reads 12, 11, 21. And there's about 30 seconds of your life you're not going to get back. <laughs> As you can see, nothing much has changed here. Uh, it's been such a long time since I've chatted with you. Oh, the roller coaster of life has been running long and hard in the Winterton household. But we're pretty much all good and oh, for the last few weeks I keep thinking, I want to podcast, I want to podcast. I've been poorly, um, various, you know, just nothing nasty, nothing COVID related, just usual wear and tear of life. I do have uh, my usual winter cough back. So for those of you who don't know, I get a seasonal cough. It's like an asthma. Nobody knows what it is. Medical mystery. And I know a lot of you out there actually messaged me last year, I think it was, to say you've got the same. Um, and it's just a really nasty cough. Uh, but don't do anything, I don't get a sore throat. I get a bit of a headache sometimes because it's the old bell clanging in the head. But uh, So if I cough, I'm going to try not to cough today. But if I do, don't worry, it's um, I'm not a death's door. Do you remember, does anybody remember the... This is probably totally irrelevant and inappropriate. But there was a poem I learned when I was young. Twas a cough that started him off. Twas a coffin they carried him off in. I should probably cut that, shouldn't I? But I just it used to tickle me. It still does, really. It's very, you know, this whole, this whole show, this show, I've got a show, is light-hearted. It's meant to be light-hearted. I don't get involved in... <clears throat> any of the heavy old stuff in life because uh, my little corner of the world is about focusing on the good and on our blessings. I'm a Christian so I like to um, um, promote kindness and yeah so a little bit of crazy for those of you who don't know me. Those of you who know me just much the same really. So said all that waffle I'm not going to go into too much detail I might drop a few bits of family updates in as we go along um, but that said we need to get on with some knitting mostly because I'm having a massive um, heat wave energy rush uh, because I'm wearing one of my FOs so should we start with that I think so even though I'm well aware that I don't have a picture of it with me I'm going to have to go and get the uh, my little notebook. Yeah, this table is covered in stuff. I just grabbed it. It's one of those, right, I'm going to podcast, I'm going to do it. And um, <clears throat> of course, there's always going to be stuff I leave behind. So I'll talk about the cardigan. This is the Rubelite cardigan from Amarisu magazine. And Amarisu also on Ravelry. I don't know the lady's name. It's a Japanese publication. I'm going to stand up, but hopefully you won't see that I'm only wearing jogging bottoms uh, underneath. So this is it. I have my... This is the most... Well, my two FOs. Let's see. That's how long it is. I've got pockets. Is. Look at that. The pockets are a bit of a pain, but once I kind of sussed them, it was fine. Oh, can't do my thing out. Full length. There we go. But just look at how super pretty that is. So, crew neck, um, and I just love this. It is perfect. 
in every way, shape or form. Uh, oh look, you can see the Lego. Let's just show you the Lego here. This, this one. This is, um, sorry, Chez Café Albert that Gary finished this week. Anyway, it's not a Lego podcast, is it? So yeah, I'm going to take this off now because it's really hot. I also just got a text from Gary saying that the builders are coming at 11. And it's 20 to 11, so I'll have to record a bit, go and sort them out, wait for the dogs to stop barking, and then I'll carry on. But for now, so... Let's see a close-up, a better one. There you go. Can you see that? So, this cardigan is, um, oh, like I say, it's one of my favourites. It's knit in pieces. It's a seamed garment. And now everybody's going, oh, I don't want to knit a seamed garment. But do you know what? This flew off the needles. I'm so used to knitting in the round or um, seamless. And I've been knitting, as you know, quite a few cardigans lately. And when you knit seamless, how much, how many stitches when you're um, generously proportioned, like what I am, um, you've got so many stitches on each row. Whereas this, it was, you know, and it's fairly chunky. I talked about the yarn in a minute. But, you know, that back, that back probably had, I don't know, maybe 100 stitches. It's ridiculous. And it really flew off. So you knit the back back piece, you knit the two front pieces, which are because it's a dropped shoulder, they're literally just rectangles. Once you make allowance for the pocket, and then you you come in a little bit here, obviously, for the collar. So rectangle for the back, rectangle for the two fronts, then you seam it. Um, did I put the I think I I did the button band after I'd done the sleeves. The sleeves are picked up and knit down in the round. Um, and then you add the button band. It is such a good knit. Honestly, I really recommend it. If you want an easy, super duper, comfortable, cozy, wearable cardigan. Um, yeah, this pattern, fantastic. So let's talk about the yarn. Okay. I am going to go and get the details and a sample of the yarn to show you. By the magic of TV, you won't even know I've gone. There you go. Didn't even notice, did you? Right, so I picked up... So it's from that issue of Amarisu magazine. As I say, it's on Ravelry. I think I talked about this on the last podcast, but I'm going to show you anywho because it's been a while. Look at that, how serene is that? I want to be like that. And actually, although I fell in love with the colors of that, that's Ching Fiber, um, I didn't particularly aim to knit it in that color. It just was a very, very happy coincidence. So I purchased from my lovely good friend, Deborah who is um, Candy Shop Yarns, check out her Etsy shop, her styling and her aesthetic is beyond the valley of brilliant. Um, there you go. So I bought this from her. So this is, in fact she dyed it as a custom order for me because I love it. This is on her Bloom DK base, which is, there you go, 115 grams, so you get a bit more bang for your buck there as well. And it's her Raspberry Cordial colourway. Look at that. I know she's changing her labelling, but even so, it's fantastic. Um, so I bought that colourway with a view to knitting. Was a different sweater, it wasn't this sweater? Um, but it sat there for a while, and then one day I thought, Do you know what? I could knit the oh, look, I'm all cockamamie. Sorry. Um, the pattern calls for holding a DK weight yarn together with a Suri alpaca silk or a mohair. So I grabbed one of my all-time favourites, as you know if you've watched me before, which was the um, Drops Suri alpaca. And it has got silk in it. Um, I'm just looking if I got a thing. I got it in the natural colourway because I spoke to Deborah and we decided that 
it would be wise to perhaps rather than go for a pink oh look is that one oh it's one of my hairs so bad um to get a natural just to mute it down a little bit so i used in fact i'm lying to you i didn't use a natural i used a rose color and i'm trying to find my card look how big my record my knitting record book's getting I'm really pleased with this because, you know, I've actually kept it going. Clearly not so much as that I've put. I haven't put the Ruby Light one in. I know I've done one. Anyway, okay. I've got the swatch. I swatched. I swatched. I think I need a badge. I swatched. So, I've got here the two. So, I don't know if you can see. It's probably coming up quite white. Um, but this one... Is like a very soft pink and it yeah that was the effect so um, yeah because there's there's no way I am going to well for a start cover this colorway with another indie dyed Surrey alpaca I mean, we just lose it um, also we can't all afford to buy twice the amount of hand dyed yarn that we would normally in order to make a sweater that's held double, can we? Um, and that's where I really think, if you're maybe buy um, a tonal yarn, maybe a commercial big box yarn, tonal yarn, and then put some hand dyed Surrey alpaca over the top of it, you'll get the most of it that way. Or if you buy hand dyed, indie dyed yarn, a base yarn like this, then for me, anyway, it's a no-brainer. I would buy a much more cost-efficient uh, Surrey alpaca. I don't buy mohair. I don't really like mohair, but Surrey alpaca lace uh, to go over it. And it's brilliant. It's so much, and it's so soft. It's so lovely. So, yeah, that was that was the first FO. So the Rubelite cardigan. I will endeavour to put the details down in the... Um, box below as they say in the doobie doo but oh, this is just so beautiful i keep looking at the viewfinder i shouldn't i should look at the camera shouldn't i because otherwise it'll be really off-putting for people but that um yeah really recommend it don't be put off because it's knit flat um, and you have to seam it and again because it's chunky it's so easy to seam okay that's the first FO. Second FO, again, you may have seen this in my super efficient notes. I don't think I showed this last time. I've been having a muscle bra hat um, craze. As you know, I've knit a few. My mum is still knitting them. She's, oh, mum has knit a cardigan as well. I need to share that. I'm going to write that down and put a picture in. Anyway, get back to that because there's not enough content as it is. <laughs> I'm going to be here till this afternoon. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Right. Next FO, which I love. Are you ready? Because I'm the sort of person that can just throw a hat on and look wonderful. Look at that. Can you see that? I can't see it because I'm looking the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. And there. How gorgeous is this? Look at this pom pom. So this is another muscle bra hat. I'll take it off and totally mull in my hair because obviously it takes me hours, hours to style this. <laughs> I'm friends, I'm very good friends with Deborah and Emily who are the ladies from Meanwhile at the Castle and I watch their podcast and they are perfection. Okay, for the camera. I know nobody's perfection and I know they will be the last people that would want me to say that, that they are perfection. They're not. Um, but in front of the camera, they are so beautiful. They are elegant and sophisticated and put together and oh, it's hashtag goals. That's all I can say. But for me, I'm more kind of your, your super saver <laughs> in the podcast world. Anyway, look at that hat. Not my knitting. My knitting is up there. But just me. 
thick. Can you see? So that's a slub. And it's so squishy and thick. It's amazing. It's a little bit on the big side. It's fine for me because I have a large bonce. But my mum knit it for me. I started it off and mum knit it. I shouldn't say that because then it looks like it's not my effort. <laughs> mum knit it. She loves knitting these because uh, it's easy and just, you know, it's your mindless sausage. Um, and she has a looser gauge than I do. So, and I forgot to adjust the needles for her. So um, it's come up a little bit big, but I knew the joy of this hat is that because it's doubled over as well, um, it's quite thick um, and it just seems to work. So nobody can swipe this hat because it fits me. Thank you very much. But it is, look, right in your face, right in your grill. Um, the yarn is Fashion School Dropout Yarn Co. Kelly is an American dyer. She's the in-house dyer for um, Do You Knit, which I believe is in New Jersey. But she also dyes, has her own dye business. So, and this is a uh, super wash merino, 90% super wash merino, 10% nylon in a slub and it's called Trapper Keeper. And I think she has some in her shop. She doesn't have a massive quantity in her shop because obviously she dies for other people. But I'm sure I looked the other day and she had some of this, but she has some of the most glorious colors. She dyes yarn, um, she's very much into haute couture. And so she dyes yarn, she gets inspiration of colorways from the designer collections. So, you know, Chanel, YSL, uh, Givenchy, those sort of things. Um, Versace, I believe she's got a Versace colourway in her shop at the moment. Anyway, um, yeah, muscle bra hat. The only thing is, because this is quite heavy, that it drops. So I have to fold it up when I use it, but that's fine. That's fine. Can't remember where the pom-pom is from. I had the card out for ages. It was off a shop for Etsy. If I can find it, I'll put the details below, but it is such a lovely pom-pom and it's a tie-on one so I've got it tied on there and it was from a UK seller I've got a few more of hers I bought a few because I'm into my muscle hats so that's that one right we're making progress it's 5 to 11 let's go on to the next object because I've got to get as much in as I can before the builders come and everything goes totally bananas. So, what else? Finished objects have I got to show you? Yeah, you guessed it. It's something I've left in the other room. It was a Christmas present and I put it away in the Christmas present box. So we'll forget that. We'll move on to, I'm just going to show you a picture. I will put it, if I can work magic and get it on the screen, that's fine. I just want to show you, I'm so proud of my mum. She's got a few memory problems and, um, oh, that ping, that wasn't meant to pin. And we started her knitting. She can knit. Um, she's, uh, she was always a great uh, knitter, not quite as crazy knitter as I am. And she wanted to knit herself a cardigan <coughs> to keep herself focused. So she picked one out, not the easiest one to knit for someone who's never really knit a top-down cardigan and she's never knit seamless, really. So uh, very different, very challenging for her. And she knit, uh, between us, I helped her knit Anchor's Cardigan by Petite Knits. And we bought the Durerum Natura, I think it was the Ulysse. It was the fingering weight, come sport weight. It was that the Gilead, no might be the Gilead, apologies, but anyway, I just want to show you a picture because she hadn't put the buttons on at this point and obviously there's an end she hasn't sewn in. But look, can you see that? Look at that. She did such a good job with that cardigan. So proud of her. Took quite a while. We had quite a few impromptu knit afternoons. Uh, to get that cardigan done and she's done it. I haven't seen it finished. What she's done is sewn some um, Some ribbon on the inside of the button band on this side and on the outside there 
and she's attaching, we agreed that she's attaching snaps and then putting fake buttons on the top because she couldn't cope with putting the buttonholes in as she was going along. So that's um, really exciting. I'll try and get a better picture and put it on Instagram when I see her this weekend. That would be really cool. Right, I am now going to get the next FO. And I'm back. This is tiring me out more than it's tiring you out, isn't it? Because you just get to sit there and watch it. Never mind. Right, my next FO, which is possibly my longest running whip of this year, I cast on a pair of um, broken rope socks. Oh, that's you know who beeping in the background, sorry about that. A L E X A. Um, oh, I've been distracted now. Thanks for that. Uh, broken rope socks by Summer Lee Knits, and I cast them on back in March with a view to making a pair of them for my dad for Christmas. And I knew I'd cast them on, just chip away at them through the year, and then, woohoo, there they are in December. Well, the first one that worked, the second one I stalled on um, because I lost my sock knitting mojo and I got into sweater knitting. So a couple of weeks ago, I picked up the second one and it's like, got to do it, got to get this done. So I did rather an arty uh, project card, that, because... Oh, hang on, let me see there. These, the colourway was Lolo Did It Hippo for Schmores from last year. I subscribed to her Hippo for Small Celebrations Club, Hippo for Little Celebrations Club. And so I got a monthly skein of yarn on her grey hippo base. And this was Hippo for Schmores. So it's got the sort of the blacks and the reds. Anyway, the finished sock. Dun, da, 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 da. Look at that. Oh, do it that way, then you can't see my jog, the join. So the grey and the speckled is the hippo for schmores. And then I use random minis from one of my advent calendars, apart from the black here, last year to break it up. Look at that. I mean, this, this broken rib pattern is so lovely. I think they're so effective. And it was, I did for my dad, I do a 64 inch circumference. It's a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I did knit it too long. Oh, how frustrating is that? I actually took it round a couple of weeks ago and tried it on him because I wasn't confident about the size. And I was like, okay, he'll forget about it by, she's going, she's doing it again. I've obviously got a delivery due today. Um, yeah, he'll forget about it by Christmas. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and it was too long. So I had to pull back um, an inch and then redo the toe. But that was fine. And just to prove, number two. So I have got two. I just didn't put them on the sock blocker. But this, this stitch pattern, it's very straightforward. Very easy to do. The biggest pain for me of this was putting the stripes in. And I realised that's why I don't like scrappy socks. I don't like knitting scrappy socks because I can't just knit them. I have to stop every eight rows or every ten rows or whatever to change yarn. And if I'm doing a vanilla pair of socks um, or anything other than a colour work pair of socks, then I like to just be able to knit all the way through. Quite happy to have a stitch pattern. That's not a problem. But if I have to keep changing yarn, it just irritates me really, slows me down. Anyway, I did it. I did it. So there's a pair. Broken Rib Socks by Summer Lee Knits. She's got some cracking sock patterns up. Um, you should have a look. And this came in a collection um, and I got three, two, three other patterns with those. But um, anyway, they're for my dad. Doesn't watch the podcast, so that's fine. Um, for Christmas. So that's another FO. Next thing, I started some, well, Christmas gift knitting. I've had a bit of problem with my arm, with my right arm and, well, it's actually the upper bit, strange enough, but basically I think that I've done so much knitting with all the sweaters I made that my muscle up here has, has tightened so much that it really hurts to extend it now. So I'm actually going to see a physiotherapy. <laughs> going to see a phys... <sighs> I'm going to the physiotherapist on Monday to get some exercises to start 
um, trying to help this because it also goes into my elbow and down into my hand. So for a while I stopped knitting on my sweaters and I thought I'll knit some washcloths, some dishcloths. Um, I've got, I had a stash of cotton. I've also been re-watching Amber Yarn Hoarder's podcast because I love her podcasts, particularly the ones from the early days. <coughs> Excuse me. So I grabbed the cotton I had. Um, I made, oh, that's attractive, isn't it? So I've got that one. And this is Grandma's favourite dishcloth. So the free pattern on Ravelry is the same one that Amber uses. And it's corner to corner, but mine don't end up square, so I'm encouraging them to be diamond shaped, which is fine. So I got a mustard one, I got a teal one, and then I did a, I did, what did this, I'm holding two strands of yarn dub together, double, same thing. So this one, I made a more pastely blue and cream one. So I got three done, which I'm really pleased about. And then I decided I wanted to make them for gifts for people. So um, yeah, I'm going to be making some more in the run up to Christmas, just as extra little gifts for people. But I love these. I got sent a lovely, lovely podcast friend. And you know what? I forgot. I'm so sorry, but you know who you are. And, and it was such a lovely gift last year sent me some hand-knit dishcloths. I love them. I've made a few myself as well. And, oh, I just so, so love them. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be on a bit of a dishcloth thing or a washcloth, whichever way you like to use it. Of course, I could get the loom out and weave matching tea towels, but that's not going to happen with this arm like this anytime soon. So yeah. So that was another finished object. I am on it like a car bonnet and we're still going good right um, oh what have I got here now that was the knits that was the socks I think there yeah. I did knit something else um, if I can put a picture in I will but I also knit a baby bonnet a friend of mine has recently had a baby I'm not going to say who because she's on Instagram and she hasn't said anything on Instagram so I'm not going to say for whom but I knit um, uh, a knitting for olive pattern, which was a baby bear bonnet. Look at that. How cute is that? That's not my picture. That's from the pattern. And I knit that, which was a lot more time consuming than I had envisaged. Because it's a bonnet as a perch, just on a beanie, but it's so cute. And again, if I can, if I can get it to work... I'll put a picture in, but I'll probably forget. So you'll just be looking at my finger pointing to midair. So sorry about that. Right, I have two more FOs. Two more FOs. See if I can get them done before the builders arrive. Uh, I'm going to show you a really big FO now. Because it's a Christmas present for my daughter. No, it's not. It's a birthday present for my daughter. She's currently upstairs asleep. Hannah's been poorly this week, so I'm letting her sleep in. Plus, it means that I can podcast with impunity until the builders come. I have been working. Oh, I should have brought my thing, shouldn't I? Oh, for goodness sake, I've got a notebook with all my um, notes in it about this blanket. I've been working on the Attic 24 Cupcake, cupcake Striped Blanket for about... It's got to be over a year, but less than two years. I can't honestly remember when I cast on. But I started it um, probably 2019. And Cherie, Ollie and Bella, Cherie and I had, last year we had the um, Scrappy Blanket Adventures make-along going on for the year. Is that the year before? After? I'm just so lost with time at the moment. And uh, we had great fun doing that. I made this um, and I decided this year that it had to be the year I finished it and I have so I'm going to show you it's quite a biggie now where is it let's start from the top I'm going to have to stand up but I can't go back too far so here it is 
Here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. I can't lift it up because of my arm. Oh my goodness, look at that. There, so if I hold it that way, perhaps that's better. So we've got that, that, and that. This is it's quite heavy, this one. There you go, that's a closer. This, I so love it. I'm going to fold it up so I can hold it properly and show you. So, there. so it's about single bed size. This, it's very heavy because it is in ring ring weight merino, how double. So many pretty colours in that. So what I've done with this, I cast on the 239 chain, as she says in the pattern. It's pretty much as per Lucy's pattern on, which most of you will, will um, know Lucy, Attic 24, but I will link below. Obviously it's a crochet pattern. It's a four stripe, four row repeat. So you do, but the two rows, it's two rows are the same, so. You can see you've got, where are we? Uh, you've got two rows of triples and then two rows of clusters, basically. And then I put a linen stitch border on it, just a small border, because I thought that's all it needed. Plus, I really wanted to get it finished. So that is a five row border. I don't know if you can see that terribly well. Can you, would it make any difference if I put my hand there? Blocks out my face, I suppose. And that's a linen stitch, but this is the border that Lucy suggests on her blog. All the instructions are on her blog, it's fantastic. Um, and I used hand dyed minis or scraps, so I used leftovers and scraps. And I got quite a lot of, um, I did some swaps last year, was it last year, year before, can't remember. I did some swaps with some folk. And some people sent me some minis, which was lovely, or some, some leftovers, I say minis sort of generically. Um, and I used those, and some of them, where are we? Uh, this one, for example, this pink sparkle was dyed by my friend Janine, actually. Um, and I used that for my <laughs> Curious Handmade Mystery Knit Along last year. Um, oh, there's an end. I have sewn in all the ends as well. Um, but there, I've just held held the yarn double as it is. But then you get to something like this pink that was quite a bright pink here. I've held where I haven't had enough of the dye yarn, or where um, I felt it's too bright to go in here because obviously this is fairly muted. I've held it double with. Good old drops again, drops alpaca fingering weight, which is something I use so much of. I use it in blankets a lot, and it's lovely because it gives it this really smooshy, um, cuddly factor. So most of these colorways are held, fingering weight, hand dyed yarns held double with a cream drops alpaca fingering weight. Um, and yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled with this. I'm so pleased I got it done. So that's been hidden away. And as I say, Hannah, Hannah doesn't watch the podcast. She flicks through it. She's a flicker through her. Um, so that's fine, but she will be getting that, hopefully as a surprise. So I have got, again, those of you who might remember last year, I also started a log cabin blanket and I've been picking that up lately. I think, I knit four sweaters back to back, literally, or concurrently, um, through the summer. And I'm kind of now on smaller things, like the washcloths or the hats or smaller things, blankets. But the log cabin blanket, um, obviously, is blocks. And I've got three more blocks to do. I'm not going to show it this week, but I've got three more blocks to do. And then I need to think about buying some yarn to do the borders the border of each block which will be the same color so if you remember the blocks i'm doing are in sort of like rainbow colors i'm sticking to one color per block and then i'm going to get probably 
most unlike me, a really dark charcoal grey, almost black, we'll see, to do the border of each block and the border of the whole blanket. So I'm quite excited to get that finished. It's a bit all about the big stuff and getting it finished at the moment. But do you find we go through phases, don't we, as makers, where you, you want to do loads of stuff, but you want small stuff, then you want big stuff, and then you want medium stuff. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's another finished thing. I have one more finished object to show you, which is sitting over on a chair there. But I'm going to talk about it first. And that is my beekeeper cardigan, which I made. It's by a pattern by Olive Knits or Marie Green. And it's an oldish pattern, a few years old. And I think I had cast it on last time. I'm going to look at my... Yeah, it was a whip last time. And I finished that and oh my goodness, again, that and the Rubelite cardigan, I absolutely love. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the finished object, but I'll talk about it before I then lean across elegantly and grab it off the chair. Um, it's a pattern in DK yarn. I used fiber spates, vivacious DK. <laughs> so. This is my, oh, I've written not quite a four day knit because originally it was a four day make along. But they are, that's the, the yarn details. Look at that, I cast it on. It's the maple syrup colorway. And again, just to prove what a good girl I am, you can see my halo. I did a swatch. That color is amazing. As you can see the pattern close up. See, these are supposed to be little bees, but it does look a bit like honeycomb as well, which is, you know, could be either or, I guess. This cardigan you could actually wear inside out, but I'll talk about more about that in a minute. So I'm not going to cut this. I'm literally going to move a squeaky chair, give you a view of the Lego, and grab my cardigan. I'm going to put it on because... And there... We jolly well go. Am I right? Am I adjusted? There's no buttons. It's just a, you know, ah, which side? It's like dressing yourself in a mirror. I can't do it. <laughs> um, right, so you can see, look at that. Look at that pattern. How gorgeous is that? Really happy. And if I push my chair back a bit without squeaking you to death. And stand on tiptoe so I've got it to there obviously very wary with this pattern about give because you've got quite a lot of extra yarn that isn't that is there a catch yeah I will talk about that in a moment that isn't actually anchored in there's lots of um, slip stitches so you've got a lot of potential for stretch there so when you work out your sizing don't I wouldn't go up too big I wouldn't go for bigger I'd go for slightly smaller unless you have a really tight gauge it's that side I can't get my left and my right um, also this is super wash yarn so that adds a give factor as well so do be wary look I'm just a headless body talking at you that might be quite a good thing actually um, where in the pattern, she actually suggests you knit the sleeves two inches shorter than you want them. So that gives you an idea of this sort of give you can expect with it. But isn't it beautiful? Here you go, here's my face again. Isn't it the most gorgeous? And the colourway, it's so out of my usual range of colours. Um, I usually go for the pinks and the, the purples. But I am very much in love with the autumnal shades at the moment. I'm really celebrating autumn this year. In fact, so much so that whereas in November, this time last year, I was doing all things Christmas, I'm not ready for that. I'm so in love with autumn at the moment. So there you go, which is good because it means I'm not wishing my life away, which is always good now, which that's it. <laughs> really weird. I just can't. Yeah. Anyway, so beautiful, beautiful cardigan. I mean, if I turn now, thank you. You can see the impact of the back, at least I hope you can. It's so pretty. Now, little interesting factoid to tell you about this cardigan. Mm -hmm. 
Last year I cast on, and again, I won't be showing you this, with an advent knit, the Stephen West Bubble Cowl. This was pre-Bubble Cardigan, so I didn't know, um, obviously he didn't design the Bubble Cardigan till this year, I think. Um, but I was knitting the Bubble Cowl. Didn't finish it, that will be finished this December. So that's another exciting knit. And I was using um, Dandelion and Dogwood Advent Minis, which I treated myself to last year and they were just divine. But with this cardigan, I realized when I was knitting it, it's stretched a lot actually, so I'll do it on the sleeves better. If you actually turn it inside out, the stitch pattern is the same as for the bubble cowl. Look at that. So the beekeeper cardigan is an inside out version of the bubble cardigan, basically. Now, don't don't all get, you know, people say, oh no, you're saying that they, they didn't, of course they didn't copy. It just so happened that the effect Stephen West wanted was using the same stitch pattern, but the other way round, as, as the effect that Marie Green had used. And probably, I don't have, let's think, actually I do have the pattern because I'm sure it must be the same in the bubble cardigan as for the bubble cowl. But you could easily wear this inside out. If you didn't have, why didn't, yeah, where you pick up, where I picked up for the neck, you can see the seaming, otherwise, you could wear that inside out because it's so pretty. Oh, it looks like I've got a... That's really weird how the colour changes on there. It doesn't actually change at my end, but perhaps that's... I did alternate skeins, as you do, when you've got hand-dyed yarn, especially something as vibrant as this. It's... Um, and I've talked about the stretch factor, haven't I? Um, I don't know how anyone knit this in four days. Uh, just amazing. I thought I could, and then after three days, I thought, <laughs> this ain't happening. I would warn you, for people who have animals or children, or both, there is a really weird catch there. This is not an excited dog-friendly wear, because all these little loose bits can be caught by claws. Ask me how I know. They're both laying there, looking like butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. So I don't tend to wear this around the house. This is my going out away from dogs cardigan. But it is, yeah, there was something else I was going to say. I said, oh, it's just that I found, oh, the sleeves really tricky. The sleeves took me a while. I did not enjoy knitting the sleeves. I love the cardigan, uh, the pattern on the main body, and this is seamless. But the sleeves, I was knitting on mini circulars and having to knit the pattern on mini circulars. And again, that's probably what set my arm off, possibly. This keeps catching onto everything. Go away. So, stunningly, stunningly beautiful beekeeper cardigan. Again, by Marie Green. I'll put the um, details down below. And yeah, just to prove, swatched. Doesn't always work swatching. I'm not, um, I do it more to get an idea than anything else. Um, right, let's just turn my, my project. See, those of you who, does anybody out there still use this system? Do you remember I started it and I put some cards, the templates up on in Etsy? I've done so well this year, I've really kept to it. So I'm really pleased about that. I've also got another knitting journal that I started. Um, because I do love journaling now, I'm really into journaling. Um, and I did this, can you see that? On the needles, you cut it's a bit pale. So I made this so that I could see everything I'd got and started on the needles and when I finished. And so, let's see, that was my first page. So this is just a traveler's notebook, it's a plain traveler's notebook. And I've got some washi tape here with sweaters on. And I've got the names of the sweaters, yarn details, and then I've kind of put target dates there. And the ones that are coloured in are finished. So there's a couple on there I've still to finish, which are long-term whips. And then I went over the page, and I just decorated that slightly differently. And I think I've gone over the page again. And these ones, none of these are finished, so they're all... They're all just as they are. But I like that because I can look 
kind of in one hit, a bit like on Ravelry, but I don't put my projects on Ravelry. I'm sorry about that. Um, I should do in a way, because it'd be really satisfying to see that. I used to when I was on Ravelry before I came off Ravelry. <laughs> now I'm back on Ravelry, but I just don't. I use it for patterns and for groups and chats and things. So, but that's quite nice. And I have actually got further on future knitting. So they're my plans and the yarn I've got. So I've actually written down the quantities of yarn I've got. I've also written the price of yarn, which was meant to keep me, you know, in line when I realised how much I'm buying. <laughs> that didn't work. Um, and then, what have I got here? Oh, just random sock yarn purchases for the odd socks. I am covering up the price of that because I had a bit of a sock yarn fest earlier at the beginning of the autumn. Oh, quite itchy eye. Does that mean I'm coming in? No. Itchy palm is coming into money, isn't it? So, okay. Whew! That's all the finished objects I'm going to show you. Damn, I was going to burst into some then. Probably best not to, isn't it? So, I have got lots of whips to show you. Shall we plough on? Shall we plough on with whips? I mean, all the time... The builders, they're half an hour late, so, you know, what's new? This squeaks, it's really off-putting. Okay, so let's start looking at some whips, shall we? Have you got yourself, have you had a drink? Get a biscuit? Yeah, maybe go away and have a break if you don't like too much of me. You can overdose on me, I get that. Uh, another bit of gift knitting, so... I've got quite a lot of gift knitting that I'm working on, but I think most of it I can show. Certainly can show the next one anyway. So my son, Joe, Jonah, who I've talked about before, who is now, can I just say, a fully qualified paramedic. Uh, he qualified where well, he graduated in the summer from his degree course for paramedic science that was it and he got a job straight away with the South Central Ambulance Service which the um, abbreviations are SCAS which I think is really horrible but it's SCAS and then he had to do an induction and he had to do blue light training so uh, he spent the last couple of weeks doing blues and twos training around the southwest um, south central area yeah south central of course it is and um, so he can now drive an ambulance and he's out on the road. He started back this week as a proper, um, as a student, he had pale blue epaulettes on his uniform. He's now got green epaulettes that say paramedic. So, so proud of him. Um, and he has also just moved in with his girlfriend, who is a medical bod as well. She's going to be working either at a hospital or a GP surgery, I'm not sure, as an associate physician. And they have rented their first house together, which is very exciting for them. It's a lovely house. We went down to visit last weekend. And anyway, so this present is a present I'm making for his girlfriend, Harriet. And she likes, she's, she seems to be quite knitworthy. So I'm hoping, really hoping, um, she's very quiet, very shy, so I have to be very grown up with her. <laughs> I don't want to scare her. Um, and she said her favourite colour is turquoise. <laughs> turquoise. So, and I have been wanting to knit the Knitting at the Library cowl. Again, ever since I saw it way back on Amber, her podcast, Yard Hoarders podcast. So let's show you. This is by Corey Eichelberger, who is iRock Knits. And it's the knitting at the library cow. And it's like a sampler. So each of these rounds, each of these segments, is different stitch patterns. And you're tot it's totally up to you. You can do it in fingering weight, in worsted or DK weight. You can do it in the same colour, in stripes. And it kind of is meant to look like books on a shelf then you could turn any striped thing around to look like books, couldn't you, really? But I love the I love the idea of it, and it's always appealed to me. So I thought I would knit that for Harriet. And 
can you believe it? I didn't have any suitable yarn in my stash. Q. <gasps> it takes a breath. Shock, horror. I really didn't. I don't have a lot of DK in my stash unless it's a jumper weight. And I didn't have the right colours of fingering weight. Um, and I wanted to do it DK anyway because, you know, be a bit quicker. So I ended up buying some West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab DK. I hesitate because I did have the tag out over here. Where is it? Because I was showing some ladies on our knit night. Oh, for goodness sake. Where is it? No, no. Okay, and there's the bell. I will be back shortly. Okay, I'm back. Builders are here. Hopefully they're not going to make too much noise. Honey is now. Oh, I never said, did I? For those of you who don't know, I have two English Springer Spaniels and they're both in here with me and they usually make noise. So, you know, let's hope for the best. They were asleep. They were so settled. And of course, they know the builders are out there, but... Um, they're just wandering around. If you hear pitter patter of the footsteps on the floor, that's who it is. Um, but hopefully, yeah, they're plastering today, so there shouldn't be too much noise. They've taken all their ladders and noisy stuff upstairs. So, right, the good news though, because I had to get up and move, I made myself a cup of tea, but also I got the yarn labels. So, for the cowl then, that's what I used. West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab DK which is a 100% British wool. And I have to say, I really like it. Um, it's 225 meters, 245 yards per 100 grams. And if I remember correctly, it was pretty good value. Um, let me find it because obviously I should have done that before, I apologize. Um, Let's just go to West Yorkshire. When I do West Yorkshire, it always comes up West Yorkshire Police. Bit of a worry that. Right, £5.53 seems to be on most on most websites. Um, not sure how much it is actually with West Yorkshire Spinners, DK. Uh, with, with West Yorkshire Spinners. Oh, there we go. There we go, let's have a look at that one. Electric blue, it is actually £6.50 if you buy it from West Yorkshire Spinners themselves. But it's a good yarn, it's a good stalwart yarn. It's, you know, it's wool, it's not merino, but also it's not, I think it will soften up as well. It's nice to knit with, it's got a little bit of tooth, so a little bit of bite to it if you like um but really nice so let me show you so it's also got a bit of a halo so i'm thinking there might be a bit of long wool in there somewhere so there i've got that one i've got that one and then i've got this one which is a self-striping or a yeah it is a stripy one which i'll show you in a minute so basically those two colors are in there as well so I bought those. Now, the colourways, one of them is frosty blue, one of them is true blue. I'm thinking that might be the frosty blue, that might be the true blue. Oh, I could look, couldn't I? Because I've got the website up. Oh, it's so clever. Right, let's have a look. True blue, that's true blue. That one, surprisingly, is deep teal which means that, yeah, that is Frosty Blues. So that's this one. So they're the ones I chose. I actually bought them when we were out. We went out, took my mum out for a day shopping. Um, first time any of us have been out for anywhere, you know, other than our local shops really. And we went all masked up because we still wear masks. And we went to John Lewis, which for those of you watching um, overseas is a lovely department store we have, but they're not, they're only in the really big places. They're not in local towns like ours. And they have, 
This particular one had quite a small haberdashery, but it had some nice yarn, and that's where I found that. So Mum and Hannah voted on the colours with me, and this is how far I'm at with the knitting at the library cowl. So I'm actually very nearly done. So you can see I'm alternating. That was the striping. Obviously the teal, the true blue, and I'm back to the striping now. And then I'm going to finish it off with rib in the true blue again. So you've got different, you can see the stitch pattern. You've got a twisted, um, twisted knit stitch, twisted stockinette there which I think actually looks quite like a crochet stitch. But then you've got um, a small cable there, slip stitch heel there, slip stitch heel, it's not heel, slip stitch. There's another stitch pattern here. And then that is the last one. And you can adapt it. So you can make these sections longer, shorter. You know, you can repeat them if you want to. But it's going to be quite a nice size. Not floppy, but not like uh, like that and it's a quick knit because it's DK so I'm really pleased with that and I do suspect it will also super soften up super soften up um, when I wash it so yeah that's really pretty so I will be using this yarn again I think if I want something in a DK that's not necessarily merino oh it's it's machine washable as well 40 degree wash, do not tumble dry. Um, but yeah, I think, look at that stitch pattern, this one I'm just doing at the moment. Oh, can you see that? It's, there's like a chain going all the way up, I'm not sure whether that's... Sometimes the light really blows out on the viewfinder here and I don't know really what you're going to see, but yeah, really enjoying that. So I might, well, I'll get that finished this weekend and that is one of another gift knit done. So that is the knitting at the library cowl by Irock Knits or Corey Eichelberg. You should follow her on Instagram actually because she she does this thing called um, knitting tip of the week and puts up funny, funny little things. She puts up quite a lot of uh, more educational tips as well but some of them are so funny, the, the clips and the, the memes and things that she finds. Get me saying the word meme. I'm down with the kids, I am. Right, so that's that one. Ah, next one. Okay, so I hadn't knit socks for a while and I wanted to knit something for Socktober because, you know, that's what you do, don't you? Socktober, you knit socks. So, excuse me, I fell in love I saw this pattern and straight away, I don't, I don't tend to buy a lot of sock patterns these days because I've got so many and a lot of them I haven't used yet, a lot of them I've got in books, so I really try and use what patterns I've got. And it's just like buying one again, it's fun, you just go through your, your pattern books and things and think, I'm going to knit that one. But I saw this come up last month and I knew that I really wanted to knit it and it's most unlike me, there it is. So, what is most like me is that I only have one picture to show you, but this is a pattern called the Ignite Socks, and it was part of, a it was a design for a um, knitting event, I suppose you'd call it, by, called Socks on Fire, which was uh, about five different yarn dyers and some pattern designers got together to create an event um, for dyeing yarn and sock patterns in the UK and it was really good it was really good they all did little um, uh, dyed yarn for it and what have you um, I can't remember all the dyes I do apologize um, but I know it was I think it was instigated by Bird Street UK by John and Claire anyway their sister Becky is um, lovely Becky um, is a lovely Becky Becky is a lovely Becky. <laughs> That's Henry getting on his bed. Um, Becky has turned her hand to designing socks this year, quite big time actually. She's becoming quite a prolific sock designer. And the cowl as well. She's designed a couple of cowls, I think. Anyway, she designed a pair of socks called the Ignite Socks 
for the aptly named Socks on Fire. And I saw this and she just had me. So this is the pattern. It was the top bit. That having the, that pattern detail on the top of the sock and then the rest is plain stockinette. Just, it was just perfect for me. I, and I loved, I just loved it. It really spoke to me. It screamed my name. So I bought the pattern. I had bought some autumnal sock, colourway, pumpkin spice colourway from Lolo Did It. As you know, I'm a great, great fan of Lauren's yarn. I had, I did order a whole load of autumnal yarn from, well, a whole load, two skeins of autumnal yarn. <laughs> a whole load of yarn. Two skeins from Desert Vista Dye Works. I splashed out, had a real yarn fest back in August time. Um, but what I didn't realise with Desert Vista Dye Works is that there's quite a long turnaround time and literally that yarn has just arrived this week. So it wasn't really in time for my Socktober. Um, but fortunately Lauren stepped into the brick because she put this out and she ships very quickly. So, and I wouldn't have used this anyway because the Desert Vista Dye Works is self-striping. Um, but this, I've finished one. I haven't dealt with the little holes by the heel yet but you will get the idea look at that how pretty is that let's just look at the pattern first look at that so there's a, a twisted rib detail there it's a paid for pattern I'm not going to talk about it too much and then that beautiful trellis pattern which I just think is breathtaking I absolutely love it and probably if she'd have put that all down the sock, I wouldn't have gone for it. But just there, it just works so well. And then it's, um, she suggests, it's like a recipe, the rest of it. So you put your choice of heel in, and I use a fish lips kiss heel, and then I use a normal wedge toe. But can you see that colourway as well? So this is Brown Eyed Girl. This mini came with, this, with the main yarn, which is her pumpkin spice colourway. Those speckles, I so love. I'm in love with this colourway at the moment. This browns, these soft browns, I love. And then I also cast on um, with the contrast there, just to give it a bit of a border but look. So, absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love this. That said, it's taken me ages to cast on the second sock. Why? Well, I'll tell you why, because I keep doing it wrong and I kept doing that wrong and I kept having to pull it out. For some reason, my brain did not want to register with this. It's perfectly well written. It's nothing to do with the pattern. But I kept getting distracted and then I couldn't work out where I was. So this is what happened. So this is where I am on the second sock. And once, of course, I've got that trellis work pattern done, it's just straight down stocking it. So, yeah, that's where I am. So I'm using 2.25 needles. I cast on 64 stitches. Um on a medium size I do 70 rounds oh no, on the foot 40 rounds of so I've done 40 rounds of stocking it after this pattern here because I like my socks reasonably long I wear them under my Doc Martin boots so I like them to poke out the top so um, especially this would be lovely to poke out that much wouldn't it um, and yeah that's it so they're my ignite socks so I do need to get those finished they are on my list to get finished although November is kind of my focus is on gift knitting so I'm focusing on the gift knitting but then I'll pick up other stuff if I want to need a break so yeah ignite socks I'll put the details down below then because I didn't have a pair of plain vanilla socks to work on um, we were going to visit Jonah at Portsmouth and I didn't have any plain vanilla socks, so I thought it's about time I cast on a pair. I've had a skein of Yarn Cafe Creations Christmas yarn since last year. I ordered it last year, but it didn't arrive in time for Christmas. And I really wanted to cast on that. So I thought I'll do that next. Um, so that I've just got some vanilla knitting. This is in my little hokey bag, which I adore. Which you can get from Suffolk Socks. Julie at Suffolk Socks sells these. Um, and oh, I love it. So 
It's the Yarn Cafe Creations Gumdrop Nugget colourway. Can't quite see that, but if I go down there, there you go. I'll show you in the cake. So it is all Christmassy, red and green. Um, it's a really festive yarn. Oh, you know them talking out there. I hope you can't. I don't think you'll be able to hear them. Oh, okay. I've, I'm at the point where I actually don't like the colour I'm using for the heels, so I'm taking the needles out of that. Because um, it's not, I want a brighter red. In fact, I think I need a bright green. That's how it's knitting up. So I did a twisted rib cuff just for a change. Now you will see that it is pooling. However much I try and convince myself, I'm not a fan of pooling. Really not keen on pooling, but there you go. It's fine. It's still very pretty and I'm not gonna not knit these. But what I do want to do is this, this color, actually that's coming out, was a mini I thought would be okay. It's actually one of the minis I used in the broken rib, broken rope socks. It's not bold enough. I think these, to really show they're Christmassy, I want to put either a bright green or a really bright red in there. So I'm going to go into stash and have a look and see. But I need to turn the heel in those so they've stalled just for a moment. But again, that's just vanilla sock knitting I've got that I can pick up. I did it in the car journey. They were going to be my Christmas movie socks, so I just knit them when I watch Christmas films. Um, but I'm also knitting on them in between. So um, that is my vanilla pair of socks. Again, I cast on 64 stitches. I used 2.25 millimeter needles. I did play around with changing sizing for my socks because they were all coming up a little bit. Oh, what have I got there? Oh, yeah. Coming up a little bit on the small side, especially after I washed them. Um, but then I did the last few larger, longer. And they kind of, yeah, they're just a bit too big. So I think I'm going to have to go. And because I wear them in boots, obviously the last thing I want is them um, ruching up, rucking up in boots, because that's really uncomfortable. So they're the Ignite socks. Uh, no, they're not. They are the <laughs> vanilla gumdrop nugget socks. I'm really distracted because I can hear the builders talking outside in the, in the hallway. So I'm, I'm sure you won't be able to hear them. Um, if you can, I'm going to have to replay, redo all this, aren't I? Okay, next pair of socks. Oh my goodness, we're on a sock thing. Now, something else I've started doing in the last month or two is I have started tech editing patterns. So, um, if anybody out there is designing and wants a tech editor, then do drop me a message. I've, I've been working, I've worked on three patterns so far, uh, no three, four, I've got the fifth, but for three different designers, I love it, I really, really enjoy tech editing, um, yeah, um, so I was um, tech editor for my lovely friend Jules, who is so sweet Violet, uh, for her St Nick socks, which have now been published, the pattern has been published, and hopefully... I'm not sure I've got a pattern that's got all scribbles all over it. But these were made to go along in conjunction with a yarn kit that Kelly at Lay Family Yarn dyed. If I got the original picture. Oh, no, but I have got a finished sock that I can show you. Um, yeah, um, she dyed a lovely yarn set on red yarn, it was called the Santa Sock Set, so it's from Kelly at Lay Family Yarn. And it was a Santa Sock Set, and it was a merino nylon DK base with a mini of undyed merino boot clay. And Jules designed a pair of socks to go with it. And I have knit, I've actually knit two of these, but they're on different sizes, they're different sizes because I got my size wrong. Say no more about that. These are going to be a Christmas gift. Not these. These ones are mine. But this one. <gasps> Look at that. How fantastic is that? Look at that sock. 
That red is the perfect red. Uh, the boot clay cuff, I just love this. So I actually have this one and then I knit a small because these were meant, oh, I just dropped my project bag in my tea. Didn't I? No, we're all right. Um, so I've got a smaller version here. I've got to knit a second one of these and this is going to be for Hannah. This one is for me, so I need to knit a second one. And I've made them shorties because uh, I thought they were better as shorty socks. I can just see myself wearing them with pyjamas. We have the Christmas Eve box and we get in our pyjamas, Christmas pyjamas and Christmas socks. So I think these will be really cute to wear with those. Um, and I so say this yarn is just beautiful. The pattern is fantastic. Um, it's got Jules beanie toe, which I have never done before. Um, so I did these exactly as per pattern and then her go day heel, so they are toe up. I don't think she's got a top down version, but you could reverse engineer them. And then this go day heel, hmm, which you're not gonna see, are you? So it's almost like there's a, a go day for those of you who know sewing and tailoring. Um, it's like an insert. So instead of a, a rectangular heel flap, you've got a triangular heel flap there. And it's great, it just knits up so beautifully. Really lovely, I'll t actually I can show you on hands the heel. Because I, this is the first time I've knit, second time I've knit a toe up sock with uh, the effectively a heel flap and gusset. I normally do a fish lips kiss heel toe up or cuff down. So you do the gusset increases as you come along the foot. And then that is uh, the Godet heel. So you can see, I mean, it's, hang on, it's my fingers. It is basically, yeah, a triangle heel flap. And this is the top of the sock, so it really needs to go that way, doesn't it? There, like that. And it is so straightforward to do. The pattern, well, obviously, is very well written by Jules and checked by me. Um, oh, look at that stitch marker. That's from Jilly Makes. I do love peanuts and Charlie Brown. So that's where I stopped the length. So that's where I started increasing for the gusset there. I've left that on mine so that for the second one, I know, been caught out about that before. I love these. One, one warning, really try not to do your boot clay wrong or make a mistake because it's an utter pig to rip back. Again, ask me how I know, but Lovely, absolutely lovely. So these are the St. Nick socks. These are gonna be part of a giveaway that I'm gonna to talk to you about when I finish talking about socks. So this yarn is from Kelly Lay Family Yarn. Obviously you don't have to use the set. Um, I know that Amy, Taylor S Studio, is planning to do a pair of these in, in a pink. So, and do a, um, a mohair, a plain mohair cuff. So she's going to basically have Mrs. Claus socks. You could do a whole set, couldn't you? That would be so cute. Um, Gary says I ought to put a little bell on the back here, but yeah, that will drive me mad. So yeah, the St. Nick socks, they are really great. And Jules is on, she's got her own website. I'll put the links down below, but she's on, ah, I didn't sew the ends in, they've caught around the holes in this, on Etsy and on Ravelry. So they are, that one pair there, actually I'll leave that out because that's going to be part of a giveaway. The next pair of socks um, I want to talk about is oh, a very new pattern recently released by my friend Deborah of Candy Shop Yarns and half of the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast, the one who I have referred to heretofore. Um, so... Oh, Project bag. Look at this project bag. This again is by Jilly Makes. When she put this up on Instagram, I was like, I was stalking her shop until that came up because I just adore this. So there's her tag, Jilly Makes. And it's got this lovely, it's a diagonal fastening, a closure, which is great because it's a square, a square. Thing. And you can see there, look at that lining as well. It's so beautifully, so beautifully. Really doing well with my words today, aren't I? And so, 
yeah, they're banging. Fingers crossed you can't hear it. So, my very, very talented friend, Deborah, has been working on these socks for a while, and you can see why. These are, and if you've been on Instagram, you will have seen these because everybody's been sharing them because they are so amazing. Just trying to find the best photo. These are called the Gingerbread Dreams socks. And just look at those. Oh my days. They are so beautiful. Right up close, look. And you can see over here, there's something cheeky on the heel. And I am going to show you what is on the heel without showing you the pattern that would just be rude there you've got a gingerbread man on the heel of the sock I mean how brilliant is that so oh, they're really banging aren't they I'm going to keep going I should really play it back and see if you can hear it when people say on podcasts oh you can hear that you can hear that quite often you can't on a podcast can you so I'm hoping that you won't hear that um, but it's either that or not, because I won't get this done this afternoon. You don't need to hear me whining, do you? Anyway, and also, I can't show you the layout of the pattern, but the layout oh, is just fabulous. It's so beautifully done. And you can buy the pattern from Deborah's Etsy shop, which is gin uh, gingerbread candy shop yarns on Etsy. Um, she's also on Instagram. And she has designed this and it's gone mad. It is gone mad. Everybody's loving on this. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of her kits that she dyes up. Um, so you've got, I mean, this colour, I just... Oh, you know I was talking about the browns, how much I love the browns? Isn't that the perfect gingerbread colour? And then you get the little minis for the colour work. This is in the kit, which are going like literally hot gingerbread men. <laughs> and you get a natural sparkle, and they're sparkle. The colour work is all sparkle. And I have, put those down. I made a start yesterday because, no, Wednesday, because I went to meet a friend for coffee. And again, I had the hill to turn on my Christmas sock, and I didn't have any other plain knitting, so I thought, right. I wasn't planning to start these socks until December, but I could get the rib done. I could get the cuff done while I'm knitting, while I'm chatting. So I made a start and I got, and I don't think you'll see the sparkle because you generally can't on the camera. So I've done the cuff and I'm about to start the color work. Um, it's such a well-written pattern. So even if you aren't able to get your hands on a kit, I would really recommend the pattern and she takes you through gauge and all of that and talks about suggesting you use mini circs for the main body of the colour work as opposed to magic loop. Now that's genius because I've spoken before on the podcast about when I use mini circs my gauge is looser than when I use magic loop or DPNs so you don't have to adjust your gauge you just go on to mini circs which are you know they take a bit of getting used to and you'd be fine on Magic Loop, but you just have to make sure, obviously, you don't pull your floats too tight because you don't want it to not get over your foot. So, Gingerbread Dream Socks, that's also going to be part of the giveaway. I'm feeling very giveaway-y today. So, there is a third sock that I'm going to, a sock pattern, that I'm going to talk about. I haven't got it. I'm not knitting it just at the moment, but I did do some, I did work with the designer on the, um, tech editing presentation of the pattern and that is the the designer is Angela who is knitting on the farm and the socks I've got to give you the right name because I don't want to totally blow it with the sock name and I really should know it without looking it up oh come on Angela you must have put it on there I'm pretty sure Farmhouse Christmas Socks. I thought that's what they were. Farmhouse Christmas Socks by Angela McGowan, who is knitting on the farm. 
Um, and these again have been very popular. The pattern was released this week and I want to show you a picture of them. So if you're a bit daunted by Colourwork socks, actually these are not that dissimilar to Deborah's in that they've got Colourwork around the top of the leg um, only. I'm going to show you that picture. How pretty are they? So you've just got a bit of colour work, you've got the Christmas trees at the top and then the contrast here and there, there's the Christmas trees. So these are lovely, these are really lovely, in fact looking at them now I really need to cast them on. I need to do a pair of those as well. Um, so this is Angela's first design of socks and I think she's done a cracking job. Um, I'm going to be knitting them and I'm also going to be giving away a pattern. So I'm going to give away three patterns. I'm going to give away a St. Nick sock pattern. I'm going to give away a Gingerbread Dreams pattern. And I'm going to give away a Farmhouse Christmas. Christmas farm. Oh man, come on, I need to have written that down, didn't I? Um, come on, Farmhouse Christmas socks. I'm just getting them the wrong way round. I'm going to write that down. Farmhouse. Christmas socks. Those of you who don't know, Angela lives on a farm. She's on a working farm. Her and her husband have a farm. And so I'm really hoping she's going to start creating this whole farmhouse knitting aesthetic, which will be absolutely beautiful. So hop on over to Instagram. She does have a podcast as well um, when she can fit it in. So um, hop on over either to Instagram, Knitting on the Farm or YouTube. I'll put the links below anyway. But I'm going to be giving away one of her patterns, one of Jules' patterns, and one of Deborah's patterns. And it's going to be on here, it's going to be on YouTube. And I am going to really try and do a weekly podcast. Leading up to Christmas at least. Because I might mix it up with a bit of Vlogmas as well. So um, I, would, I will draw for the winner. What's today? It's Friday today, isn't it? Hmm, so it would be next... Friday, I think Friday's fine. I will draw for a winner next Friday before I podcast next and I will send you via email or I will contact the designers to send you a pattern and it will be, I don't know, I don't think I can specify which pattern will go to whom. Um, but what you can do to enter Hmm. I'm not sure. No, I think it will have to be random. So one of there'll be three winners. One of you will get Jules' pattern. One will get Angela's. One will get Deborah's. Okay. If you're really, really, really determined to get one of those, um, which you shouldn't do really. I mean, if you're really averse to color work, if you're really not confident with color work, you can say obviously you would you, you would rather have um, the non-color work one, which is Jules. Um, but anyway, um, leave a comment below if you'd like to be entered. Really, they're banging. They're not supposed to be making a noise today. And tell me um, which of the socks you'd like to knit. If you had the choice, which of the socks you'd like to knit. Um, and also, if you think about it, what... What would be, would your perfect Christmas socks be just a plain vanilla sock with Christmas colourway? Would it be with colour work? Would it be striped? Would it be whatever? So anything about what sort of socks you like um, for Christmas or for December knitting. Um, and just prefix your comment with Christmas socks and then I'll know that you want to enter the draw. And then I will do the whole random number thing next week and there will be three winners. That's really winding me up now. Oh, and he's dropping his hammer. Anyway, that is my socks giveaway. Okay, quick sip of tea. Oh, I've got so much more to say. Hmm. Really? Really? That's really rather rude, isn't it? Do you know what? Scratch that. I've written in my notes. I'm going to give away two patterns. I'm going to get through this. Two of Angela's, two of Jules, two of Deborah's. There you go. Six patterns are going to come your way.
and you will get them in time to start December knitting. So we'll get six winners. So in which case, yeah, if you really have a preference, um, then you can state that as well in your comment below. So that's that. I think I'm going to have to stop for now because I really think that banging is going to drive you mad. I did want to talk about my quilting. I did want to talk about my journaling. And I'm also starting a brand new make along. I'm resurrecting the Ravelry group where all systems go here at Sheep and Cheerful. Um, so I'm going to resurrect some chat threads in the Ravelry group. I'm going to start a new make along, which will be, um, yeah, the dogs are walking around now, um, which will be a year long. It's going to be a prayer blanket or a prayer knit along. Basically, I was hoping to talk to you about that today, but it's not going to start till December the 1st. So I will have time next week to talk about it more when hopefully we don't have the background noise. Um, but I think it would be hopeless trying to talk about it now. Plus, I've probably done quite a long podcast today. So, yeah, that's it. I also have two sweaters on the go, which I will share with you which I will share with you next week. I've got a whole heap of stuff that I've bought that I was going to show you. But again, we'll keep it for next week. Um, I will very quickly just show you. I talked, excuse the wrestling. I talked about the Desert Vista Dye Works yarn, didn't I? And I bought this one, which is Zombodies Jumping in the Leaves. that which is ow that's honey see so she's gone freaky now as well so that's self-striping that's desert vista dye works and then i also bought this one which is pumpkin she's going to play with her bone now talk about attention seeking pumpkin spice zombody which oh, i would love to have knit on that this autumn but I just think I'm not going to be able to cast on a pair of autumn socks now so I'm going to keep these for next year and that will be really exciting for me to make those next year um, and yeah as I say I've got so many more things to share with you but they'll have to wait until next week won't they honey you're making that quite clear down there so I think that's about all Oh, I hope you've made sense of some of this. I hope the noises haven't been too off-putting for you. If you've got any questions, any queries, do either leave a comment down there. I promise I will look at I do read them all, but I'm not very good at getting back to them, but I will. This is a whole new, a whole new me going on. Um, hop over to the Sheep and Cheerful podcast group in Ravelry and join there. I will start getting things going there again or message me on Instagram if you want to send me a message of any sort well, it's a nice one <laughs> don't make me cry so i think that's about it i think that's all i have to say so you've got the giveaway don't forget the giveaway there's a however many people enter six chance six six in whatever chance of you being picked for the pattern um and you'll have a lovely pattern to make some fabulous christmas socks um, in any event, check out those designers. They're all lovely friends of mine, I'm privileged to say. And uh, I wish you a very lovely week. A very lovely week? Have a lovely week. It's the weekend, isn't it? Have a great weekend. Um, big shout out to all of those who have to work over the weekend, especially those in um, the caring professions. Um, we do love you and appreciate all the work you put in looking after us. And I'm sending blessings and prayers to you all. And don't forget, stay cheerful. <laughs>